Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to do 10 things to upgrade your Ford Explorer. I've got a 2022 Ford Explorer ST here. Thanks as always for the likes and subscribes and the comments. I hope this video helps you out. Let's dive into what we're gonna to cover today. We have black ovals, we're gonna put some red letters on. I have racing stripes, some rain guards, the hitch cover and uh, headlights. We'll cover reverse lights license frame plates and the rear HVAC module and of course how to jack it up. All right let's jump right into the uh, the black badging. So these Ford ovals as they're called the blue oval um, or emblem whatever you want to call it. The blue and the black doesn't go too well with this car. I just want to swap these out and I went to Ford's accessories website found them for a hundred bucks. Uh, didn't have to go through the dealer or anything like that. They look pretty good so and I like that it's uh, OEM and then it, uh, it'll help me black out this car since it's already black on black. So I'm just gonna kind of heat this up and loosen that sticker. I used fishing wire to kind of pull as I was prying, just so I didn't have to pry too hard and potentially damage the paint. Um, and it worked, so that's all you gotta do. It just pops right off. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna use Goo Gone to get the sticker off. That took a little bit of time, but it's a, it's a more mild. I didn't wanna use acetone for that, so. It took some time to get that off. And then we're gonna use rubbing alcohol and just get all the residue off of there so it's nice and clean for the new sticker. And you can't go wrong with this. It's made to be slotted uh, a little bit wider on one side so that you can only put it right side up. And then we'll just press it down and polish it up. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. It looks really good. So for the front though, it's more involved. Uh, we gotta jack it up. I'll show you how to do that later. Got to remove four screws here, and there's a parking sensor. And this is on each side. Everything I'm doing is on each side. This is the only electrical connector that needs to be removed, again, on each side. But I'll show you, um, if you need to remove your entire bumper, um, there's some more wires that are behind here. We have to do this anyway, so just to get the, the bumper cover to come forward. But behind here, uh, every other wire that you would need to disconnect is available to you if you need to remove the whole bumper completely. So there's some screws on the bottom here, maybe 10 or so. I just took those off. And then there's a, there's a couple of screws holding the fender to the front bumper cover here. This was the most difficult part of the whole job. They're very hard to kind of angle and get into. So we're going to support this again because I'm doing this as a one man job and put my mechanics chair under there. I've got a couple of screws up top and then we're gonna be ready to go. So there's three clips on the left. I think there's three clips on the right there. And then we're gonna go back over to that fender slash bumper cover connector and I'm gonna pinch that little connector. I've already removed the two bolts but you still see them here. But I had to pinch that with some needle nose pliers to get that to pop off. And then I'm just gonna slide it out just enough that I can get behind there. Let's take a look. So the back plate, the back of the plate has two screws, one on the left there, and there's one on the right. So all we gotta do is remove those nuts, and that's what they look like. We're gonna hang on to those, and it slides right out. No sticker up front. The new one has got those same studs that we're gonna be screwing onto. I mean, this is less than five minutes. It's mostly just prep work, um, you know, jacking it up and getting the front bumper cover loosened so that you can access it. So really happy with the way this came out. I think it looks awesome. It's totally uh, murdered out, right? Don't see that too often. All right, let's jump into red letters. I get more comments on this than anything else, actually. People just notice this. It sticks out. These are inserts not decals so they actually have some thickness to them they look really good 20 bucks all right racing stripes so i went again to ford accessories uh, website and i wanted something subtle this is the wife's car so i didn't want you know big red or white racing stripes uh, that wouldn't have worked for her so i went to ford accessories and got this um, I'm going to use, I love these McGuire's clay bars. I'm just going to use that real quick just to get the surface totally prepped, nice and smooth in case there's any kind of 
like bugs or anything that might be stuck to that paint. Even though it's a new car, it's totally clean, it's still gonna do that. All we gotta do is peel off the backer, and then um, we're gonna we're gonna mix a little bit of soap in the spray bottle here, and we're gonna spray the back of the sticker first, and then we're gonna spray the top of the hood. Just gonna line it up. It, this is actually really uh, a lot easier than I thought it would be. Kind of, kind of use my hands just to kind of get it in place, and then it comes with a squeegee. You squeegee the front first, and then you squeegee back, and then you just peel this off. It's super easy, and it looks really, really, really good. Yeah, I hope this helps you. Um, it's subtle but um, it's something, right? All right, rain guards. Um, I'm not a big fan of rain guards, but I found these low profile ones. Just fell in love with them. I thought they'd look really slick. And I live in Cleveland, so we often need to kind of crack our windows in the winter time uh, to help with condensation and fogging inside the vehicle. So first we're gonna kind of test fit them, make sure everything's good. And then you gotta peel off about two inches of the sticker on each side just to kind of tack it down make sure everything's lined up and then we just you know peel those the back of that sticker off piece of cake press it down and we're done for the rear same thing just get it tested test fit and then uh, yeah piece of cake these look really good happy with that and it's functional too, it serves a functional purpose. Um, here it is on the highway, you can see there's a little bit of gap there. That gap though, I didn't have any rain come in the car. So I don't like this little logo though, so I used I used acetone and a Q-tip's worth of acetone there to loosen it up and peel it off. And now you can see it's not there and looks really good. It looks like it's OEM. So for a hitch cover, I looked around a lot of different places and I was noticing people say that these hitch covers fall off. So I got one that kind of stays on there. So in case you go through a car wash, it's not gonna get lost. So I like that, it's Ford. There's a link below. Headlamps. So I went to WeatherTech, I got these lamp guards. This was the one thing I probably wouldn't do again, um, but I'll show you how it works. It was just, it was a lot of work, I probably, if anything, would have used a professional uh, to do it if I was to do it again. Again, I'm going to use that clay bar, get the surface perfectly smooth. We're going to do the fog lights too. Just get it nice and clean, nice and smooth. Same thing here again. We're going to mix in a little bit of soap. And we're going to spray our hands because it's so sticky and it's clear. Um, we're gonna make sure our, ha our hands are also nice and slick so that you don't get any fingerprints on the back. So the way this works is you're gonna kind of start on a side and you're trying to stretch it as you go around. It needs to, it needs to sort of um, stretch out to reach all the way. And this took a while. I mean, I had to sit there doing that for a long, long time to get it to finally stick down and and look right. I just don't think I did as good of a job as a professional would have, so. Okay, reverse lights. So the OEM reverse lights are, they're not too bright, and I, I was noticing on the backup camera, I couldn't see too well. So I thought, oh, let's just upgrade these to a, a brighter LED reverse light. I'm actually following the Ford instructions. There's gonna be a link below for that too. This is actually really simple. There's just one bolt that really holds it on right here. It's just getting down to it. I got these for like maybe 15 bucks on Amazon. Again, there's a link below. I'm gonna try these, we'll see if it lasts. It's also got a little bit of a projector. So I think that'll help too. So I'm gonna hang on to these OEM bulbs because they probably will last a long time. So if these ever burn out, I can switch back or if I just don't like them. 
So pretty simple. Installation is the reverse of the removal. And here you can see side by side, much, much brighter with the LED when you're reversing. And here I'm in uh, going into reverse from the brake with the brake on and you can see it's still bright. Okay, license plate covers. <laughs> this was, uh, I tried three different ones. Started off with the WeatherTech clear cover, which is their best license plate cover. It looks really good, uh, but it's September. So I was noticing I was getting condensation and that's no good. So I, I switched over and I tried the Tough Bubble Shield. This was like 10 bucks at the auto parts store. Also had condensation. It looks really good, but I don't have a picture of the condensation there, but it just didn't work out. So I found this. So the whole, whole purpose of a license plate bracket is really to protect it through a car wash because car washes will catch the edge right there. It'll catch that edge and then bend it. So what I'm trying to do with this is it's gonna it sits inside of there and then that bracket's so strong, it's not gonna bend. And you can see the whole plate. No, it's not obscured. I love it. That looks really great. There's a link below for that too. Okay, when I bought my car, the rear HVAC was deleted. So it's actually kind of hard to find one. Um, I got lucky, I found one on eBay. Here's the part number. This is what the back of it looks like. It was about a hundred bucks delivered. Yeah, so you've got a plug, you've got your USBs, you've got cup holders, but there's no rear HVAC. It's really easy to change, it's five minutes. You just pull back the cover. There's a couple of wires. Just disconnect those and we're gonna take this thing inside. So there's there's the wire that you need for the new control module. So it's all ready to go. You don't need to do anything. You just need to have the part. So we're just gonna use a Torx screw. And then, yeah, I'm just gonna plug it in. I had to push pretty hard to get that in there. But it just snaps right back. We turn the car on. And then you push the power button there and it works. Everything works. And I have heated seats because this is an ST, so there you go. Nice and easy. All right, for jacking up the car, Ford only gives you four jack points, which are the pinch welds on the sides of the car, but I need to jack up the whole front end. So I found this jack pad, it's nice because it's it's got the slots for when you do need to jack up just one, one pinch weld, but today we're gonna be putting it on jack stands and that's the jack point that I found uh, worked for me. And then I just rested it down on jack stands. So I hope that helps. So thanks as always for watching. I really appreciate the thumbs ups. Here's some nice eye candy for you. I just love this black on black. It looks so good. With those red letters on the, the bottom of the front door and the racing stripes and the black emblem. It just came out so well. Even those rain guards look cool. So I hope this helps. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.